and we're back for game number two in the Joint Dota League Season 3, Division 2 Europe. Chile Billy versus Cafeteria Fresh, and uh, it was an amazing game one. What do you say? Yeah, it was a really good one, and I think the best part about it is that we see that these two teams are actually fairly evenly matched up. Like and you said, the first game draft that uh, I think Chile really had an edge going in, like everyone thought that they were going to win, and although they did end up winning, Cafeteria Fresh put up a really, really good fight, so just having two teams that are really even with one another is refreshing to see as Cafeteria Fresh pick up Skywrath and Brewmaster as their first two picks. Yep, that is definitely interesting. Cafeteria, again, going for the Brewmaster, but on the other side, Chile really, they come up with another draft. The Faces Void is coming out, which means now for Cafeteria, it's time to ban and pick things. Chile really might want to get into the Chrono, because the Chrono is going to be, again, uh, something really central. But also, Scarif Mage is secured against the Brewmaster, so they don't have to fear uh, this silence. Plus, the Doom has been banned out, so they make space against for the Brewmaster. The only problem I had last game was then... I don't know, not being aggressive enough sometimes in the push, in my opinion, and having a Brewmaster Doom as their late game cause, it just didn't really work out. Everything, it was too reliant on the Black Hole and on the Death Ward dealing out damage, and you saw what happened in the last fight. Like, just a wrong engagement, just not waiting for the Black Hole, Death Ward, everything, and the, the Death Ward even being interrupted, the Black Hole being cast, but only up for a second because he died. Uh, of damage over time on him it just didn't work out like I, th I think they could have even dropped two Rexes there and made a nice defense maybe even a counter push because a lot of buybacks were down anyway mm -hmm. but yeah Chili Willy they, they made the right decisions aggressively then in the end and they thought like yeah guys it's enough 50 minutes it should be it should be ours that's a big downside of those heroes the fact that they had to fight with all their ultimates up Brewmaster Tidehunter uh, they were used. They used to be really popular, and now they're very popular again. But there was a time period where they completely fell off, and in my opinion, it was because their cooldowns are just. You're so reliant on those high cooldown ultimates that if you're forced to take a fight between those ultimates, then you're just going to instantly lose. And we saw that game. We saw that in the last fight in the last game. They had to rely on their ultimates that just weren't available to them, and they got severely punished for it. Now. I hope that Cafeteria Fresh with this Brewmaster pick, they don't go too deep into the huge AoE team fight again. Because although it will work out sometimes, other times you're going to be caught without any ultimates and then you won't have a chance. Yep, absolutely. But for now, we just have to look what they actually ban out. Like the, the result of I don't know, having a Faces Void already against you, they ban out the Invoker. I can un understand this one, of course, because the Meatball flying plus Sunstrikes uh, possibly all over the map. Uh, with the faces white even as a nice setup or even the shackles as a nice setup oh, I can totally understand this one the Viper I guess that was more or less like a respect ban from last game they just don't want to have that tanky hero again mm -hmm. um, on the other side Brewmaster being banned out even though I would have seen the Bro uh, I say Brewmaster I mean Titanter obviously um, being banned out that's quite interesting because I think the Ravage could have been nice for both teams but of course it was not Chili Willy's turn to pick so they rather say like hey guys we would rather ban this out and against the Dream Protector being banned that's interesting yeah I mean both teams certainly respecting the possibility of Dream Protector having a large influence on the fight with Overgrowth uh, working well with Brewmaster and uh, the team fight that Chili Willy have it's kind of understandable as Cafeteria Fresh for the third pick up their secondary support going to be the Earthshaker. Lots of long range done there, and uh, it'll be pretty useful in shutting down the Shadow Shaman if he's going to shackle someone. You just throw the Fissure from really long range. Also, it's a great way to interrupt the Faceless Void once he drops the Chronosphere. You just Fissure him and then make him walk really awkwardly to get around it and then try to do some damage in that sphere. Yep, absolutely, and uh, well, let's see. We have the Earthshaker on one side, and the Death Prophet came as an answer. That means there is our external damage. We now have possibly the wards if correctly placed, Ether Shock, Crypt Swarm, as well as the Exorcism, all that into the Chrono. And of course, with both of the last picks Chili Willy really here, we also have some crazy, crazy push potential coming in. Push potential where you can't really counter push against it because 
I don't know, march of the machines or call or anything like that can't really help you. You have to manually go for those wards or even shut down the Death Prophet really, really fast as a main target, which is always a hard thing to do because Death Prophets, especially when they're mid, they're going to get really fast, really tanky. And then with the Yule Scepter just selling some time, maybe even supports for stuff in you away. We saw BKBs, Shivas coming up, Heart of Taras, Bloodstones. These are all options for a Death Prophet, and this will be the hardest task for Cafeteria. Get the Death Prophet down, otherwise the Exorcism is just going to do so much damage. It's a really different type of pushing that Chili Willy are going to go for. When you compare it to what Cafeteria Fresh had last game in the summons, we're going to make more dudes and then push type of pushing where AoE reigns supreme. In this particular scenario, initiation reigns supreme. So Cafeteria Fresh, their biggest item pickups are going to be Blink Daggers and the Brewmaster and Earthshaker. If they take a fight before the Chili Willy side gets to the Cafeteria Fresh towers, and that's going to be when they have the biggest advantage. And they're going to pick up a Morphling as their fourth pick, so they're going to have a little bit more late game for uh, this particular one. And it's a good thing that they have some late game now. Yeah, absolutely. Now the Morphling is on the other side, uh, like when we compare it to game one. And the question is now, Cafeteria going... Um how can I say this? Going now for the late game, even though they already see that Chilla really has the means to like not have this game for a long time. That's what, what worries me the most at the moment, because we're looking at a team that can chip away a lot of towers there just at the start of the game. And even if it goes then later, like regardless how the fight goes, like Exorcism, Master Open Wards, these things, they, they're going to do a lot of damage on the towers, which means eventually your base is just crumbling and by that time your wolfling has to be ready so you can defend the base before it comes to a fight around the base like there have been so many games in the past that i've been casting where we have five on five fights and maybe even chile really losing that fight but still mass open wards doing so much damage here and there some collateral maybe a bit lucky with a double siege engine there as well things like that so cool you won a team fight but you're not fast enough in counter pushing plus all that stuff already did damage to your base or even got Rex down, tier 3 down and this is what worries me the most about this game here. I really like though Chili Willy's response to this Morphling and the Ancient Apparition. Morphling's one of his biggest survivability tools is his ability to morph into strength and if he has that uh, frost effect over him due to the ice blast of Ancient Apparition then Morphling suddenly, well if he does strength morph then that'll just kill him faster which is exactly what you want if you're Chili Willy. Otherwise, they'll just deny him that one escape route, and that's probably his most potent escape route. Chili Willy have the Chronosphere and the Shadow Shaman to also deal with this Morphling. I think Cafeteria Fresh right now, they just need to pick up a hero to fight early on. The Morphling is going to be dead weight for a little while in this game while his base is being pushed. He has a waveform to contribute, but that's about it. They need the other four heroes of the Cafeteria Fresh side to be able to fight early and fight often. Yep, absolutely, and the last spawn stage is on. The center is getting banned on one side, and now we are waiting for Chili Willy's decision. To be honest, I have the feeling it could be anything. Like, what could Cafeteria like, pick up? They have a Scarab, Mage, Earthshaker as support, Brewmaster mid, Morphling farming. It is about an offlaner, so Nature's Prophet might actually be an interesting pick, but they decide it's a Batrider, they don't want to handle the Batrider. Which is okay, case interesting. I mean, a bet rider with a BKB crabbing the face of before he can chrono. Yeah, I can understand this one. But, okay. Uh -huh. A Lish is coming out. So who's the offliner? I did not see this one coming. We no. might be seeing <laughs> dual lanes right now. Uh, Skyrath Mage Earthshaker is an okay kill lane. It's not the best. Uh, Lich Morphling might definitely be a thing in the middle lane. Try to shut down the Death Prophet. I think for Chili Willy... Uh, yeah. Their offlane pick, I was just going to say that Bristleback would have been one of the best heroes for either team. A hero that could fight early and fight very often. But with this Lich pickup, it, like, uh, it definitely puts a lot more early game team fight into the Cafeteria Fresh side. Lich is one of those heroes that could fight. Whoa, okay. Lich suddenly not important anymore because we have a Huskar <laughs> on the field. Oh, Jesus Christ. What's, what, like those... Absolutely, I did not expect any of these picks ha happening. Like, delicious for me a surprise, but yeah, your guess with the dual lanes might be uh, right. That is a farming Earthshaker with some backup behind him and a Morphling with some backup. But the Haska is topping even that Lich pick. I don't know where these picks are coming from. This is pretty crazy, but either way, there's my overlay, so we got this done. <laughs> and I, I don't know, This is this is just... This is just crazy.
I don't know as what to say. Huskar, as far as Huskar games are concerned, I think, well, he's playing, he's getting being played by Kaitora, and, who went mid last game, and it looks like he will go mid again. He knows that the only mid possibilities are Morphling Lich or Brewmaster, and either way, Huskar has an advantage there, and there's just so much magic damage on yep. the uh, Cafeteria Fresh side that Huskar is actually a really good hero here. Yep, he, he doesn't care about waveform, he doesn't care about uh, thunderclaps, fissures, arcane bolts, and all that shizzle. Even the Lich can't really impress him. Like, if that Husker is getting tanky, and since the, uh, say, it, like his magic or assist is, is um, percentage scaling, this is quite a lot tankiness he's getting out. Then plus some lifesteal. Like, let's see, I mean, we, we've seen some Husker picks, even happening in the uh, competitive scene, but... A lot of them failed as well, so let's see how this one is actually going. Either way, both are looking for something, but at the moment it would be a 5 on 3 and oh, you don't want to be there. But it's daytime of course, they have the high ground vision, they know they're here, so they're just, I don't know, just going back. They didn't find anything, nothing was lost here, just um, a larger or longer way back to your original lane. We're going to introduce the teams real fast. Baron here playing the Morphling in that lane. Then Pelican, he's going to go back to the base. He wants that sacrifice really, really fast on his Lich. Then in the mid, we're going to have, of course, SM and Smiley Face again on the Brewmaster. And then the one, the two guys here on the way to the safe lane, Radiant side, Clinch and Black Dynamat with a Farming Earthshaker and a Skyrath Mage. Oh, wait. No, this is a Farming Skyrath. Yeah, I, I like farming Skyrath Mage a lot better. Getting a quick Rod of Atos is a huge item pickup early on, since you could solo kill people with Mystic Flare. Uh, on the Chili Willy side, we have play on the bottom lane, faces Floyd. It's going to be Dante going 1v2. Looks like potentially 1v3 as Baron also makes his rotation down there. So it's going to be a standard tri lane uh, for the Cafeteria Fresh side. Kaitora is going to be handling the mid lane versus the Huskar. He'll have to deal with Mischance from uh, Drunken Brawler as well as eventually Drunken Haze. But until then, his uh, Burning Spears are going to reign supreme. Up on top lane, we have Ralphie being uh, handling that ancient that ancient apparition. Matori played a really good sand king last game. Is going to be handling the shadow shaman, and Tokasan's going to be handling the death prophet. Already with a soul ring recipe, kind of an unorthodox item pick up for the death prophet. Yeah, but I, I don't understand this. Like cafeteria is is this is a mystery to me. Like I actually thought these dual lanes they might be a good idea because like some core heroes for the earlier game get the farm, like the Sky of Mage and everything, but now they rotated back to a traditional to their traditional tri laning and that's I don't think this is good news. I think this is a mistake. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree with you. Lich with a lot of levels will have a train frost early on. And that's sometimes really good. And that's not what you want when you know you're gonna be pushed really hard by Shadow Shaman and Death Prophet. You want something that's always going to be good. Chain Frost can sometimes just do 280 damage and that's it, and that's very, very underwhelming as far as ultimates are concerned. Now, sometimes it'll instantly win you fights, but those times should be few and far between. I would have really liked to see dual lanes in this scenario. Get a Skywrath Mage a little bit more far. Morphling going up 2v3 in the top lane is a little bit dangerous, but still I think the alternative is just too bad. Yep, and we have a Haste Rune on the Shadow Shaman. That might actually be interesting because the Panda limit is really low, but does he even try? Like it is 12 p.m. So is he coming in? Yes, he is coming in. We have a shackle there. He's still using the self and everything, and now a holder misses, and he might actually turn this around. No, he doesn't even get the range of it. So in the end, it's just some harass damage coming out. This was really well played by the panda, using both bottle and self to bring him like above a certain threshold. And now, oh, there's the fissure. It actually slows the husker, but it's, this is not enough. Like there will be the return. Like spear, but just not enough. Even missed. Only level one clap for the brewmaster. He's only level four, and he's gone for drunken haze and drunken brawler, both of which are making it a little bit more difficult for Kaitora to harass with those burning spears. So I do like the skill build and the uh, skill selection from the brewmaster. It'll really equalize this lane, whereas ordinarily I would say Huskar has a pretty sizable edge. Having so much mischance so often is really killer. As he misses, you know, yet another CS in this lane simply because of that mischance. But uh, mm. taking a look at the bottom lane real quickly, faces Void as a poor man's shield. He's for CS, whereas Lich, you would expect Lich to be doing a lot better. Togasan is actively pushing the lane, though, with Crypt Swarm. I don't really know how much I like this. He's going to give Lich a lot of experience for free. But then again, the Lich, I don't know. Like, I just, maybe I haven't seen a, a good and strong 
farmed Lish in a long time, but I'm just not scared of a Lish getting too much farm, to be honest. I'm just not scared of it. Like, that Chain Frost... <laughs> I just don't see it, it really happening, but... I was often wrong when it comes to like heroes that are not that popular anymore or, or never played in a role where they are like offlaner or even get some farm. Maybe we're gonna see some crazy chain frost bounces coming out and I will be proven completely wrong. But for now, I just don't feel it's it's too scary. He gets a lot of CS of course uh, on Tokusan here and with that, I don't know what that soaring build is but we're gonna see about it. He's buying it right now. I don't know, maybe just some spam ability. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, I don't really understand either. They're going to go for a little bit of aggression up on top, but unfortunately the Cold Feet Shackle combo did not land. I would be really scared of this Chain Frost if I were Shadow Shaman or Ancient Apparition. Huskar doesn't really have anything to fear. He has level 3 in the Berserker's Blood already, so magic damage is not really going to be too devastating coming out from Pelican moving forward. I, I mean, again, Lich is a very inconsistent hero with his ultimate, and that's never what you want. Inconsistency is bad in the game like Dota. Yeah, it's RNG. It's just, uh, like, I don't know, maybe in those clusterfuck fights you can, you can actually do something with it, but overall, like, just one lucky off-bounce on a target that, where there's no consecutive stun, uh, consecutive bounce, then, yeah, that's it with your ultimate, and from there on you're pretty much... You're a useless right clicker, and your frost blast is a relatively low cooldown spammable ability, but still, like it's it's not too impressive overall. Impressive overall. By the way, in Looks the mid, like though, how, yep. how did they get the Husker such a XP advantage? Was the Panda forced out of lane? I thought he was here all the time, but I guess with those supports like saying hello all the time, maybe he lost some experience there. But yeah, the Husker is about three or four creeps ahead. Okay. I didn't even see him uh, rotating for the bottle or something. Taking a look at the Morphling really quickly, he is rushing up a Hand of Midas. It is almost flying out to him, just the recipe for now. So he's not really respecting the early game power of the Chili Willy side. This Hand of Midas, though ordinarily a pretty decent item on the Morphling, might end up biting him in the ass because this is an item This is a item that's not going to be uh, working towards the Lincoln Sphere. It's not a Ring of Health. It's not an ultimate or to help again, defend against the likes of Shadow Shaman or a Cold Feet from the Ancient Apparition or something like that. So he's going to go in for the late game and that's a pretty good sign I think for Chili Willy since their plan is to go aggressive early on. Yep, yeah, and we have a smoke now here in the mid. The Earthshaker with the Scarif Mage, they are on the way but to be honest it's already half duration in the mid there is a Husker waiting with the assistance of Arasta so I don't know where this one is going. The Panda, I don't know, maybe he's just baiting or something but he's gonna get the double damage rune. Gonna use that incoming bottle, bottling it up now and they're going top. There is an Ancient Apparition waiting for him who just does the pulls and yes, this is interesting. There's the slow, there's the Fisher, he can only go to the left side but oh my god the Crypt Swarm and everything. It is the first blood on the Skyrath Mage actually, I mean both die but the Ancient Apparition here getting the first blood and this is really nice for him because he was alive for that 0.1 seconds before his own death. So he got the XP and the bonus gold there as well. Good job, I guess, for Chile, really. Timing was everything. That was both a very good offensive fissure from the Earthshaker and a very poor defensive fissure from the Earthshaker. Putting his Skywrath Mage oh, on a now. side with a whole boatload of creatures with Tokusan in a little bit of trouble. Fissure this time is going to miss. Tokusan does deploy his ultimate Chain Frost just for a little bit of damage. It will bring down Tokusan eventually. Huskar in the meantime dying solo to SMN. Well, that shouldn't have happened, and I don't know what happened on the bottom lane either. Faces Void dropping very low, but uh, they get the kill on the Death Prophet Retaliation. Ultimately, the score lands at 3 for 2. Huskar yep. just getting crit with a double damage Brewmaster. I think that's... That's, uh, that's it, yeah. No ultimate use, no, no, nothing. It was really just SMN, like, using double damage rune plus one charge of his bottle and that's it that's how he killed the pa the, the Husker and he, he's going again double damage is still there look at all the crits and everything and he has the ultimate if he wants to but no he's he's not going for it he doesn't want to commit it Husker is going to get his salve forced out very early on right after TPing into the back into the lane is less than ideal uh, the Chili, uh, Capture Refresh they get a good engagement or a decent engagement up on top Killing off the Death Prophet is super important. Now Ralphie once again in a little bit of trouble. Fissure will once again miss, but I don't think it's really going to matter. Yeah, they get the kill on the Ancient Apparition. Clinch takes a little bit of damage, but he's able to get out of there safe and sound. They're getting kills on this top lane now that Lich has a little bit more nuking support. Yeah, I mean, the first one... Oh, in the mid. 
I did not see this one coming. My illusion rune on the panda, but this time the Huska is getting the return kill. This is his revenge. This is of course good news for him. Now the Huska is actually ahead in experience. After he died solo to the panda, he's just reversing the entire thing. So 4 and 3 at the moment. Like in the mid, it's so unexpected. They could kill each other within just seconds while they before they were just, I don't know, harassing 4 from back. And now you see bottom, by the way, the, the Void actually going pretty aggressive on the Morphling. Just some harass hits here because the Morphling knows, oh, there is a Chronosphere. So if he goes aggressive, there might be someone in the back following up. And we also have an Ancient Apparition, which is, yeah, going towards the level 6 pretty much soon. This side pull, it's a double pull here. And maybe a bit presence on the lane. And we have, yeah, a nice combo. Void, Ice Blast. This is going to hurt on the Morphling. The mid lane kill on the Brewmaster honestly should not have happened. There is no scenario where Huskar is, should be able to kill Brewmaster, especially when Brewmaster has his primal split up. That was just the Brewmaster running out of mana as Dante does go aggressive onto Baron, but realizes that he is a little bit outmatched in that regard, at least for now. But uh, SMN, I, don't, I didn't see if he uses the Drunken Haze or Thunderclap in order to drain his mana, but he didn't have mana for split, so... Oh, That's there's a slow and a stun here on oh, there's the Chain Frost, but this might actually bounce. Yes, Echo Slam coming out, making sure he's getting there at least a second or even a third bounce. It was enough, but now, oh, Ralphie doing some damage, of course, on Black Dynamite, but in the end, yeah, the Cafeteer just, yeah, getting those kills. But I, I definitely like it. I mean, the Lich now being part of those two kills, twice the Chain Frost being used. It's a relatively long cooldown, but, but still, I mean, 145 seconds, a bit more than like two and a half minutes cooldown but twice it was successful now on the Death Prophet. Killing off a Death Prophet early and often is exactly what you want to do. Every time you kill off the Death Prophet it delays level 9, 10, 11 where Death Prophet's pushing is just going to get stronger and stronger and that means your towers are going to be alive for longer. You'll have more map control and you'll have more freedom to do what you want in those lanes so if they can continue killing off the Death Prophet they'll not only slow down this mech that she's buying but they'll also defend their towers for longer However, Morphling on the bottom lane is going to waveform in for Dante. will instantly get bashed. Is there going to be another one from Dante? Kaitora is in the area. He could jump in on this Morphling. Ice Blast is not yet available for AA, though. What What was that, though? Like, oh, there. Oh, he's going the in on the bottom lane. He's going to life break Baron. That's about it. Yep, this is just ultimate used and then fast out. But I didn't understand what they really wanted to do there, what they achieved there. The Chrono used for nothing. The Husker not engaging on this one. Like, that was... Really, really weird to say the least. So, yeah, Chili really, I don't know, like the performance last game was so good, but right now, some here and there some really questionable decisions and rotations coming in. The Huska and the Panda, I feel like, they, I don't know, it, it feels so squishy, these heroes, as in, like, both might make a mistake, both getting those solo deaths, and now they're rotating, but then not committing. Also, Panda Ultimate, where, when does it come? We are 12 minutes in. Swapping it now to net worth as well, but I think the panda could have rotated by now. He definitely could have, though farming up your blink dagger is always a worthwhile endeavor if you're going to be yeah. uh, handling that mid lane in a lane where you're not getting completely demolished. So I actually like the ro rotation from Huskar and attempt to do something on the bottom lane. They didn't use the Chronosphere in that particular case when the Huskar was joining that fight, so they didn't invest too much aside from a life break, some regeneration, stuff like that. And most crucially, it allowed Shadow Shaman to stick in that lane for just a little while longer and oh, get a little an bit ice pass of flying. experience level 6. This might actually be interesting. There's a Chrono, Ice Pass flying, connecting here on two heroes, and now all he has to do is the Chrono. The problem is, he died before. Like, nice, nice one. I, I, I didn't think... Uh, I don't think they they really noticed that the Ice Blast is flying. Like, the plan was that the Void is coming here, Chrono, Ice Blast, and that's it. But the problem is, they were just faster with the same thought. This is a huge stack of hard creeps that uh, Cafeteria Fresh are going to be clearing out right now. It's a lot of gold for, at the very least, SMN. This is his Blink Dagger's worth of gold if they want to give the entire thing up to the Brewmaster. With level 4 clap, this creep wave, this uh, creep camp, not going to be lasting very long, but yeah, uh, I didn't even see the fact that the Skyrath Mage has hit his level 6 off of getting a couple kills on the Death Prophet, a very crucial level. I mean, he's very powerful with that Mystic Flare, and though he's not getting the primary farm that we kind of wanted him to in the early stages, a level 7 Skyrath Mage with the Mystic Flare online is able to kill pretty much anyone on the Chili Willy side, with the exception of the Huskar. Yep, yeah, absolutely, and we have the on pass coming, we're gonna see this creep camp like being farmed, like, there's many people just 
being around, having the experience, pleasure here. But let's see, 6 and 3, it is 13 minutes and it's time to look at the crafts. We have 4 cafeteria at the moment, almost a 2.5k uh, experience lead, which of course can be explained by A, we have a lish, and B, we have free kills advantage, and of course some nice stacked camps. Then again, on the other side, they had better pulling in the in the tri lane. But when it also, yeah, when it comes to gold, we have pretty much the same thing. 2k, and that's it. It's it's not too much, but it's a start. In the mid, we just saw I just saw the last second of that gang on the Husker, so it's a 7-3 actually. That was just a fissure setting up. Ancient apparition, nice blast. I thought was heading up towards top where Lich was also going. Pretty aggressive on the death prophet. Once again, double damage rune on the brewmaster. Level four drunken brawler being. More relevant than I've ever seen it before going against the Husker. But if jump board from SMN will instantly get shackled. Do they have a chronos They do. Those cold feet onto SMN and drop the chilling touch. There's the mystic player only onto Dante, dropping him very low. He'll book it out of there and he will survive at 70 HP. They get a kill on the Brewmaster in exchange, burn a couple spells for it, but it's going to be completely worth it for them to do so. Yeah, I don't know what that Brewmaster thought hopping there on a, on a panda like. Uh, on a panda, I say. Brewmaster hopping on a panda. Jesus, Hefler, go home. <laughs> hopping there on a Rasta, like that instant hex at least level 1 is always like most Rastas have it like if they are level 6 but yeah he was like no YOLO going in Thunderclap and then going for the ultimate that would have been a kill but no in the end just didn't work out I think he may have even thought that with the guaranteed crit on Drunken Brawler with a double damage rune a clap hit would have killed off the Shadow Shaman yeah. it did do a lot of damage to be fair so he wasn't that far off that plan but yeah, going into that many heroes is always going to be very, very risky. And well, he got punished for it substantially. Yeah. But, but even if, even if he would have gotten the ultimate of like I don't know the, being busy here, then oh, but maybe the morphling is the next target. There's the ultimate here, but you can't <laughs> run from a Husker. But there's also now the ultimate of the panda. So Husker really, really low. Of course, he's now tanky against all the magic stuff. He's healing up, but the right legs are just gonna get him. That's the problem about the Husker at the moment. He's not tanky enough. He's gonna go for an armlet. That's at least yeah what it looks like. But the problem is about a Husker. Like a Husker needs armor and HP. That's the thing he really needs. I mean, right now we only have strength PTs, a uh, urn, and of course the first uh, ingredients for armlet. That's just not enough. So we have a one-one trade. But to be honest, not even a bad one. Like the morphling for a Husker. I guess that's a trade you can do. Husker also needs to not go into one v threes. He was already engaged upon the morphling. He had. No way of canceling that as he was once, once you're in the air, <laughs> yeah. you're not going to stop being in the air until you land on your target. So he was put into an unfortunate position. They thought that they could get the Morphling, bag him, and then run away. So it was a little bit unfortunate for the Huskar. I definitely think he didn't want to be anywhere near that. But Morphling, with uh, the presence of mind to waveform towards his teammates, turned a bad thing into a good thing, getting a kill on that yeah. Huskar. Oh, and there we see the first ex or actually the second exorcism of this game, but there's also Lish, and oh my god, the bounces. It's actually bouncing back, and with all this damage with the Mystic Flare, this is just enough, but oh, to the in the sidelines, we have another go here, and time walk out, but Baron wanted to chase this up. It's maybe a good idea, because there's the Ancient Apparition. Yes, the Lish actually securing the kill there. So, yep, this was a very, very short exorcism. Nice rotations coming in from... The cafeteria guys here, there's no joking with those guys, they really want to defend those towers, but the problem is exorcism on one lane is the mass open wards of the other lane, so yeah, two for a tier one tower trade it is in the end. I think at this point it's probably safe to say that the Lich has impressed both of us in this particular game so far. Yeah. The Chain Frost have been really, really good, and he's been picking fights where the enemies have not expected that there's going to be a fight, and just laying down the Frost Blast, he got somehow two bounces on that Chain Frost, to land on the Death Prophet, like I don't know how he manipulated the orange, the random number generator to make that happen, but he made it happen. So he's getting kills on the Death Prophet constantly, and he has his mech, he looks like he might be going for a pipe, and after securing that tower, he's going to be swimming in some gold, lots yep. of gold for the uh, cafeteria fresh side. I'm really disappointed about the Death Prophet, because usually we see Death Prophets and it's like, hey guys, I'm level 6, let's go, now it's getting really, really fun, but this Death Prophet, we saw one, uh, to be honest, we saw two exorcisms right now the other one was barely even visual present because I mean it was like up for two seconds this one lasted about three seconds but he never got anything out of his exorcism so far he just got nuked down focus down 
with no chance whatsoever to like have those ghosts attack any target, not even the tower. So, Death Prophet is really the definition of being shut down at the moment. Yeah, that and the Shadow Shaman as well. He's only dropped his different wards once. I believe it was just now in the mid lane, but uh, the damage would certainly not indicate that fact. Chili Willy, they have a good amount of pushing heroes and heroes that can fight early, but they're just not getting the upper hand. And now at this point, Brewmaster with the Blink Dagger, I mentioned before, if you're going to be going up against pushing, you want initiation, and they have it in spades with that Brewmaster, who now does have the level 2 split, plus a Chain Frost up in 10 seconds. Have to hear fresh, they're ready to fight at a drop of the hat, and Earthshaker WoW almost has his Blink Dagger as well, so lots of initiation power for Capture Fresh. Chili Willy, they're going to be pressured back pretty hard, at least they aren't unable to push these towers effectively. Yep, absolutely, and the Earthshaker, I like what he's doing here, he's committing fully to, to just stacking stuff and just killing it, and this is exactly, now it's enough for the Blink Dagger, it's coming out, it's in the stash, he has to go back anyway to the fountain but you remember when we were talking about uh, the game in the draft and everything to be honest Chile really has a like a really really bad game because right now we are 18 minutes in all the crucial ultimates are up but so far no crazy combinations with the chrono just here and there like a kill that had to happen pretty much nothing like no crazy plays no nice combinations no ice plus chrono combinations as well the Husker proved as a pretty useless pick so far like, I mean, he made here and there a rotation, got a kill, got even a solo kill on the Promaster, but that's about it, his achievement. He's far away from being like that tanky, unkillable thing we know from, from Pops or from some other games where we, like, saw a, pan uh, a panda, I say, a Husker. And I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of worried because, I mean, one tier two tower, uh, one tier one tower is down in 20 minutes with a Rasta and a Death Prophet. This is, this is an achievement but a negative one like you yeah. should by now have at least all the tier 1 towers that's that's coming with the draft but talking about the draft the death prophet he's gonna die again nice stun here not even the fisher used first just directly next to him and the enchant totem securing full duration on the mystic flare and now talking about push chillibly maybe they want to do something in mid but the rotations you see them already incoming earthshaker just still got the plot of the death prophet on his hands and then he might want to get even more Gonna be staying fully in blood when the Husker is not going back soon. This is a level 2 Echo Slam on the Earthshaker very early on, 20 minutes in. Or, you know, it's relatively early as far as Earthshaker games are concerned. Blink Dagger Echo Slam at this stage is still devastating. And again, I think this goes back to how many times they killed the Death Prophet. Death Prophet struggled yep. so much in that top lane, and, and she's gonna continue to struggle as they go in for Matori. Fissure will hit onto the Shadow Shaman, wall him off from a successful retreat. Although he might find a hole in the trees, he will. Oh. I don't think he's going to survive. Here comes a jump nope. in from Uscar, but instantly the split will do no damage. Kaitora is going to be focused down. Baron is going to jump right in with Breath. He will wait for him and dodge the damage from the Ice Blast. It looks like everyone else will retreat for now as Death Prophet in this fight. Brewmaster, you forced to use the split out of necessity, is going to be pretty healthy when he comes back into this fight. Oh, so they jumped the Earthshaker here, and he doesn't get any cast off. Now he's silenced as well, but oh my god, they need more. They need more. The Chrono is being used, but the Crypt Storm actually finished it off. That was a wasted Chrono, but I guess it was... In the situation, how the game is right now, it was a good decision though. Just securing it well by the Panda. Also being silenced and now this slow here. It's not oh. enough, but look at the chain frost. One, two, three bounces already. Now they are following here. Tokasan. I don't know why Tokasan didn't pop that mag earlier. Now he's popping it just for himself. But the Husker coming in. There's already the Ghost Scepter on the Morphling. Nothing really he can do. His ultimate is on cooldown as well and he's just TPing out. Nothing they can do. Not even the Yule Scepter finished on the Death Prophet to interrupt this one, so... Chile really, they, they seem desperate. Like, I really have the feeling, like this Chrono Crypt Swarm, for example, it sh that, that showed that they really want to make something happen, but at least now, they force Cafeteria back, and with the Master Rewards, some damage at least on the Tier 2. Kaitoria got four or five free hits on the Lich, but now he's gonna be forced back out. Dynamite gonna get a beautiful vision onto Kaitoria. He's trapped in the corner, however, SMN gonna get jumped upon. Can they bring down the Master? He's gonna get one clap off, but he will die in the end. Kaitoria now gonna duel up against Baron, but the Shackle there, holding out, making it very unfair. Matori will get focused down by the Mystic Flare, and huge Echo Slam now onto Ralphie and Tokasan. Ralphie's gonna drop, Tokasan gonna be the casualty shortly after. It's a two for four trade in this bottom lane. They get the tier two tower, yes, but yeah. they lose a lot more than they would've yeah. liked. That's that's the downside. I mean, uh, this reminds me of exactly what I said in the draft. 
I mean, this fight was horrible for Chile Willy. <laughs> they still get the objective down. I mean, the problem is they're already on the back foot, so this is not really a great achievement. But this is how sometimes games are really won. Like, one cafeteria would force them here into a team wipe after team wipe, but they still get all the objectives done and eventually win the game just by having mega creeps. But, oh, in the mid. Wow, oh, that Earthshaker, no. The void already too far away. But this Earthshaker is also doing crazy amount of work in this game. Like, his fissures are beautiful. Always beautiful, forcing the enemy into like either completely being blocked in or having such a long way around that like the right clicks alone on the way home pretty much will kill you. So yeah, this this Earthshaker was really nice. Like his enchant totems, even the echo slams hitting on two to three heroes, always nice in place, beautifully done. I also want to point out something else that's going on with the Lich and that. Uh Fight that happened right below the Roshan pit, that area. Well, never mind, because Kaitor is going to get initiated upon. There's a split as well as a chain frost, but again, he's Huskar. He doesn't take that much magic damage, but it looks like it will be enough with the Brewmaster securing the deal there. Ancient Apparition up in the air. The Fissure is going to follow and perfectly wall off Ralphie. Yeah. That's going to be an easy two kill for the Cafeteria Fresh side. They'll take down a tower straight after. But yeah, as I was saying, uh, Huskar got a whole bunch of hits onto Pelican, but Pelican at one point had 25 armor on himself. That's the ice armor doing work, that's the mechanism armor doing work, and a Huskar that's doing that little damage at this stage of the game is going to be really, really sad moving forward. At that point, he's just a walking life break, which is not a hero that you want to have. Yep, absolutely, and they're just chipping away this tower. There might be a Chrono in, but yeah, he gets it. It's only on two people, though. The wards are coming as well. This is the external damage, but the Void already has to go back. Actually, he is dying now, the Ghost Scepter on Toka-san, but yeah, he's using the Yules now. Finally, the Exorcism is ticking in, but for how long? That's the question, because he's already going down. Shock on two. There is no ultimate on the Panda, so you got to be careful. There is an Ice Blast, so he doesn't want to take too much more damage in the end. There is even the Sky of Mage going down, but oh, Huska is back. But the problem is now the ultimate is used. He can't chase with that on the Earthshaker, which means they just get out of it. It was a two for two trade, I guess. Unless I missed something. No, I think that's pretty much it. They used the Chronosphere, they used the Exorcism, I believe. Death Prophet and Faces Void couldn't get much done. Faces Void uh, got hit really hard, was actually forced to retreat after he uses uh, Chronosphere offensively, which is pretty much the worst case scenario. We've been ignoring the Morphling for a good part in these fights, and all the while with his hand of Midas, he's been working away at an Ethereal Blade. The lack of pushing from the, uh, from the Chili Willy side means that he's been getting a lot of free time to do whatever the hell he wants, and Ethereal Blade means that heroes like the Faces Void, like the Shadow Shaman Ancient Apparition Hell, at this point the Death Prophet, very vulnerable to that as well. The Shotgun is going to be taking targets one after, t uh, one after another. Yep, absolutely, and uh, well, the shotgun, the shotgun is, is really gonna be a problem for sure. I don't know, we are 11 kills behind here, Cafeteria is, yeah, just really dominating this game, and we have to look at the crafts, long time no see with them, 14k, 14k advantage, this is what we had in game 2, uh, game 1, after 50 minutes, exactly this number after 50 minutes, but pretty much before the game ended. Now we have that already at 25 minutes, and when it comes to gold, well there, okay, with the last two kills they lost a tiny bit, and also now of course the tower playing in there, but still, 7.5k uh, lead, and statistically if they manage to get it like way above the 10k, even there in a gold advantage, that's already being above 90% in the win statistics when it comes to the 30 minute mark, but yeah, with a tower they pretty much finished that trade, tower for tower, but let's see, Chili really. They have to come back on this game pretty much soon, otherwise they are running out of time. They have the pushing lineup, they should do something, and they actually did something without the Exorcism, but still, Death Prophet getting that tower down. Yeah, they take a free tier 1 tower, but I think at this point Huskar is way past his prime. He's going to be going up against maxed out ice armor, so everyone on Cafeteria Fresh are going to be very, very tanky from his right clicks. And not only that, but you'll also have to worry about, uh, first of all, Enchant Totem laying that finishing blow. That's usually what uh, teams struggle with when dealing with Huskar, is they can bring him low, but they can't kill him. Uh, Enchant Totem is a great tool at dealing with that, but on top of that, they'll have Drunken Haze. And there is a BKB being built up on Huskar, and that'll help him a little bit. But Drunken Haze is going to be huge in shutting down that hero, because he needs to be able to lay down that fire on his target in order to get kills, otherwise it's just not going to happen, especially since the enemy has so much armor. Yeah, absolutely, and we're going to see uh, Roshan uncontested. Um, I actually thought this might be a Roshan versus a tier 2 trade, but at the moment, uh, Cafeteria, they decide to, I don't know, be just on the sidelines a bit and let them bait. 
I guess, but then again, Morphling is showing up now on the Lich as well, so I guess they're gonna fully commit, even though the Panda and the Earthshaker both of the Blink Dagger initiate, initiators, they are, <laughs> they are on the sideline. But no, I mean, the tower going down, no cliff. This is, in the end, yeah, it's the trade I expected. Baron is trucking with the amount of damage he's putting out. 170 a pop is pretty huge at this stage in the game. Of course, that means he's at 900 HP, almost 1,000, but once he gets hit with an Ice Blast or even just the chilling effect, if it doesn't hit him, he's going to be really, really dead really, really quickly. So he's going full-on glass cannon build. You kind of want to be doing this when you're holding an Ethereal Blade. If you find a support, then, you know, one, two spells and they're dead. But yep. uh, at the same time, he's very vulnerable if Chili Willy ever mobilize and catch out the Morphling. Yep, the Morphling as such, I mean, uh, he had a nice rush on that on that, uh, shotgun, but then the shotgun blank is also not that great of an item, because right now he's just uh, lacking, I mean, himself the burst damage for it. He can't go too deep into agility, because that, yeah, is then a, a bit too low, especially with uh, science and, and all that stuff on the other side, and also some burst damage as well as the chrono, even though you can strength morph in the chrono while the chrono is on, it does not interrupt the entire thing. Still, like, he will get soon into more stats. 3.8k there is already. That's getting scary. The question is now, what do we see? Do we see Manta? Maybe a Lincoln's afterwards, even though I doubt it because he doesn't need it in this game. Do we see straight up Scotty? Something like that. Right now, I don't see a reason why not. Going for selling that bottle eventually, then getting the point booster already, the ultimate orb. Why not? But first we see a fight. He bought him. I c this is gonna crash soon. SMN is looking for a jump in. He has his Aghanim Scepter up, so he'll, he'll be able to drunk and haze people at will. Huskar, most crucially, is gonna pick up a BKB right before this fight starts. He's gonna take a little bit of chip damage, dropping him low to start things off. Baron is off on the sidelines, and well, in the meantime, Chili really, they're just clearing off Ancients. It's like they don't even know a fight's about to happen right now, and a fight might not actually happen at all. But uh, yeah, Chain Frost level 3 is up. Earthshaker packing that level 2 Blink Echo Slam is always going to be devastating. And well, Cafeteria Fresh, they certainly are looking for a fight right now. As far as Morphling items are concerned, Butterfly not necessarily the best since the uh, Chronosphere does shut that off, but still a worthwhile item against the likes of Huskar. Scotty, I think, is probably at this point going to be the best pickup for him. Getting I'm just, a lot tankier. I'm just thinking about if that Void knew that like there's five people standing on spot, not really well spread out. Now they spread out properly, but still. Oh, there it there. is. They jump in straight for Ralphie. They bring him down instant. The Cyclone actually saving Dante from the Mystic Flare. A little bit of miscommunication there. He jumps out with the Chronosphere still intact. Uh, Pelican going to be jumped upon by Kaitora, but now things are going to turn around. He pops up the BKB and he'll start to turn around on the Brulings. There's the Exorcism, but now Capture Fresh, they can have a free pass to just leave now that they've forced out everything. They get a free kill. They use some ultimates to do it, but yep. uh, hell, they force out the Exorcism. From the uh, Death Prop, she gets the Yule Scepter onto the Brewmaster, he's gonna land straight after, and the Chronos here now onto two, Baron gonna drop down really low, really quickly, the Strength Board keeping alive for now, Fissure gonna slow everyone down, Baron gonna two shot and kill off the face boy, now go to town onto Kaitora, will wait for him forward for the X for the Death Prophet, the Huskar is the only one to survive and he has the Aegis, I don't think Half Tier Fresh could, okay, you got the Burning Spear kill on Morphling, they can't kill off this Huskar for a second time, but they get four kills and it's totally worth it for them to do so. And I think that Panda, like, I don't know, uh, the Panda, I say, the Earthshaker, I don't think that was an intentional plan on that little hill there, like here, this this Rashan hill. I think this was a misplank, because, I mean, he still could do the Fisher from there, but I think he wanted to be part of that fight, just stunning with the totem overall, but I don't know, this this fight was just the best example of, of Chilabili, the Death Prophet. What I, what I, for example, don't know is, like, they're running back, the panda coming out of his ultimate and he has Yule Scepter, pops the exorcism but doesn't use the Yule Scepter to hold him in, pl uh, hold him in place really close to the tier 2 tower. No, they are chasing forward and then they end up like even below the Roshan pit like and then fight while they are just surrounded. This was pretty much a, a war on three fronts because in the back we had uh, <laughs> we had the Skyrath Mage and the Earthshaker just, uh, just hiding in the trees. Then they had the Morph and the Lish and of course the Brewmaster in front of them, like left to the Rosh Pit and south from the Rosh Pit, just like that. And they go directly in a pit being surrounded by the enemy instead of just holding the enemy there where you really want him. So I really didn't understand this one, but Chili really they committed to it and they paid dearly for it.
And not only that, they got a huge break beforehand. If Aces Void took the brunt of the Mystic Flare, he would have been dead, and then they wouldn't even have the option of keep of the, the uh, of to continuing the fight. So they get a huge break in having the Faces Void survive with that miscommunication between SMN and Clinch. But still, it was just so disastrous for them. They are so very behind right now. Tier 2 Towers are still up for the Cafeteria Fresh side, and they're going to go once again straight for the bottom lane. This Lich is getting really big. Rod of Atos, 4 Staff, Mech, and now a Talisman of Evasion building up what looks yeah. like Heaven's Halberd. Easy. Carry, carry Lich. New meta. Like, I've never seen a Lich in the last two months or so on an offline, solo. Like, I've seen him on, on lane support for obvious reasons because of the sacrifice, but, like, and Lish really farming solo and actually doing, creating his lane. This is something completely new to me and uh, I don't know. At the moment, Deja Vu, there's already to go here on the Haska. Full duration, Mystic Flare. Now he's so low. Yes, there it is, the finisher of the Earthshaker. Now, the, I don't know, the Void wanted to go in, but he's reconsidering. There might be another stun on Death Prophet, but no. He's just going to get some damage on the Panda. They got what they wanted. They got the Haska. They get the tower. Now the question is, do they want more? Or do they just go back? I mean, all outer towers are down. Roshan is... Oh, still a bit away. We don't even need to think about this, Roshan. So the question is, high ground or not to high ground? Well, they use split already, so that's a big team fight ultimate down. However, they still have the shotgun, they have Echo Slam, they'll have another Mystic Flare, and they'll have Chain Frost with a Huskar down. I think, at this point, you gotta go and see what you can get. If they get caught with a big Chronosphere, then they can get screwed up pretty badly. Matori off to the side, looking for Hex target, or at least trying to keep himself safe from Baron's uh, sh Morphling shotgun. But they're gonna poke at the Tier 3, and they should be pretty safe in doing so. The Earthshaker, no, not the Earthshaker, Brewmaster gonna lift it up into the air for now. They're not gonna commit much they to are. this. I mean, seriously, look how spread they are. Like, it, it's so funny that like the team without the void is spreading out, and oh no, I mean the team with the void is spreading out like they fear a chronosphere, but what they actually fear is that Earthshaker. Like he keeps up Enchant Totem all the time, being ready to jump in there and dish out so much damage. In the end, it is just I don't know a small little voyage on the tower, a third down or a bit more than a third, but. Invisibility rune on Skyrath Mage. There's no gem on the other side or any other detection. Oh, but they found someone else. They found the Death Prophet trying to go to the secret shop. Easy blowing him up. Now the question is Chili Willy. Do they want it more? Jump board from Matori. Gonna get the hex onto Baron. Chronosphere is gonna catch Baron as well as Pelican. No chain frost just yet, but he's not taking any damage. There's the Echo Slam from behind. Black Dynamite gonna get a huge three man fissure as well. Dante still unable to kill Pelican. He does get the mech off. He's now finally going to die. Baron still fighting up against Kaitora. Needs something to finish him off. Black Dynamite, how are you up on that cliff again? Baron's gonna start shank morphing and he'll start killing off the Faceless Void straight after. The Ancient Apparition, not a part of that fight aside from his ultimate, but everyone else on the Chili Willy side, they're going to get cleaned up. Yep. Huskar surviving for a very long time, but not long enough. It's no, this is this is just not going anywhere. They were focusing on the leash, and it took them all their resources, pretty much, to get that leash down. And even there, they were pretty lucky because was that even a residual one? Uh, Faces void actually finished uh, him off. Okay, but still paying that much for it. And to be honest, this game, the Death Prophet, it's just not his game. There, there will be buybacks, but of course, no chrono. And the, the cliff is out, which means I don't think they can stop them here. And oh, there's a solo go on the Ancient Apparition. Easy kill. Shotgun used. So much committed, but oh, a go here on the Rasta. He's being slow. The Panda. Silence for now. No cliff, so Dante wants to go in, but being at the moment saved the Earthshaker. Does he get a stun off? Nope, he does not. He just wants to go back. There's TPs out after they got Rex. The Prumas are actually getting a kill here on the Shadow Shaman, almost in front of the fountain, and now he wants more. They turn around, but Jesus Christ, at least the Morphling goes down. That's an achievement. Let's see. Panda. Nope, the Panda doesn't get the blink, uh, blink out, and he's dying as well. That's two nice kills for Chili Willy, but the damage is done. A side lane Rex down. That hurts. That first hit bash from Dante, if he didn't get that, Morphling would have been just fine. But yeah, Morphling did go for the Eye of Scotty and Brewmaster and Earthshaker, diving really deep, almost to the Fountain of Chili Willy. They weren't supposed to get kills, that was just supposed to be pushing the Chili Willy side back so that Morphling could take the Raxes, and though that was successful, they also got kills somehow, so... The Cafeteria Fresh side is just so far ahead right now, Huskar is going to take a Roshan, it looks like there will be a minimal, res minimal response from the Cafeteria Fresh team. 
but they are getting so tanky right now. Lich, with that Talisman of Evasion showing that he could tank up a Faceless Void throughout the entire duration of a Chronosphere, and even Black Dynamite, he's holding on to Assange, so his Enchant Totem is going to hit a little bit harder now, plus his Echo Slam is now level 3. He looks like he's going to be going for Heaven's Halberd as well. Suddenly, uh, the BKBs are a lot more important on the Huskar and Faceless Void because they have to be able to attack during these fights. Yep, absolutely. And I mean, they get the Roshan, but like, how helpful is this Roshan going to be? That's that's the question. I mean, the Huska coming back, yes. But the problem is, the Huska for now, they, they they never had really problem getting him low. And as long as the Earthshaker is, for example, still there, they was, uh, won't also have any problem just getting the last hit there. That's that's the biggest problem. So let's see how this goes for now. We have Dante actually. No, oh my God, they're next to each other. But is there a silence? Oh, there's the slow. But now there's the silence. BKB on. There's a Chrono. All three of them are in. But of course, the Ice Blast is bouncing around. Still bouncing around between all those targets. Even the Master of Emotes come, coming out. They're kiting and fourth and back. Panda is now there. So far, only the Skyrath Mage down. But the Rasta is going to be the next one. Yes, here the last Fisher trying to do something. Husker, he's still there. I don't know. The whole fight is just absolutely messy. They focus at the moment here on the Brulings. There's the ultimate. They want to get all the Brulings down, but the wind one just too fast. There's even a time walk forward. They wanted to get the Earthshaker, but also he just too mobile. I can't believe that this fight only has three casualties. This is nuts. That was a dream fight for Chili Willy. Morphling was in the mid lane. He was way too far away to contribute anything, but still, they only take two heroes. There were a couple of crucial mistakes being made in that fight, and that Skyrath Mage, once he saw the faceless void, the first thing he did was use Ancient Seal, and well, Skyrath, well, Face Void has a BKB, instantly buffed that out. Skyrath Mage does have a Scythe of Vice. If they did that, they would have been able to nuke down the Faces Void easy peasy. Uh, also, the Huskar, he managed to get a Life Break targeted on the Earthshaker, but he ended up jumping into the Chronosphere, which was uh, a little bit awkward. So Earthshaker got to slip out of there through a couple fissures instead of just being instantly dropped or at least forced into the Ghost Scepter. So in Chili Willy, they make a couple stakes, both sides do. But it was a 4v5, and Chili really only take a 1 for 2 trade. It should have been so much better for them. Yep, that's... I am I'm really, I'm still astonished, but oh, the Earthshaker blocking him in, and there's a Yule Scepter. The Yule Scepter is actually by himself, but now he's blocked in there. Even though there is a nice Ice Pass, but this won't do too much. But yeah, the Husker coming in, doing so much damage already by the Sky Earth Mage. Well, he's secure for now because of the morphing, and now he's just getting kited. Well, the Ancient Aberration is going down. Look at this. The Scotty just doing work. The Fisher finishing it pretty much. That's ages down. And even more, there is only the faceless void. He could Chronosphere finish coming up first in, with the Chrono. Is he coming in? The Chrono is coming up, but oh god, like this is not working. The Master of Emotes not too impressive, and la, latest now he's gonna go down. Or the Morphling, well, actually being passive. The Morphling not doing right clicks on him, but they don't even need it. The Earthshaker there, and Chan told them. The last survivor is the Rasta, but I think they can't even go right now mid without creeps. They don't need creeps. Cliff is not available, and they just have a tanky Morphling. But the Morphling at the moment is so passive. He's like really scared of something, even though nobody is alive on the other side. It might be passive, it might be merciful, because this guy <laughs> is hitting very, very hard. He's going at 300 a pop very, very quickly. Used his Ghost Scepter, or uh, Ethereal Blade, to save the friendly oh, Skyrath. Right. SMN's gonna get hexed, but even if they get this Brewmaster kill, so what? Pelican throws out the Chain Frost, SMN somehow still alive. Uh, he's gonna turn around and sacrifice himself to the rest of his team to escape, although Lich does get lifted up into the air. Shotgun now on Tokon with an Echo Slam. There goes the Death Prophet. Tori's gonna get pecked on the Black Dynamite, and he'll go Scepter out, however, he will burn in the end. Baron now gonna go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that Huskar. It's gonna be a very close fight, but I think the Morphling should have this. He will. He will not burn either due to the Strength Form. Tori's gonna get one more shock off. Baron gonna jump forward for a triple kill on him. He'll survive. No Ancient Apparition Ice Blast gonna come for another 40 seconds. Baron is going to be, feel free to go and secure the mid melee racks with only the Shadow Shaman to defend. This is going to be a double raxing for mm, the. Not uh, sure of that yet. Side. There's still the Void just respawned, like he didn't have a buyback for the last one. And now he's going in. There's the Chrono, and he's going to focus on the Lich. Of course, there's the Ice Armor, but still, with that Eater Shock, he doesn't have any Ghost Scepter. So, yep, the Bash, the last Bash is securing it, or is it? Now we have a, a Shackle. Hayataya, Hayataya, on Clinch, Clinch. He has a Hex. Yeah, buying some time, time walk, slowing him. Nice four stuff, perfect timing on it. And now he's even turning around because he knows he can kill that Rasta if he wants to. There's Shackles, but he's using it too late, my friend. So, in the end, it's gonna be a trade. The Rasta a bit too late on his Shackle button there. 
Morphling making the full retreat. If he was there, they could have easily turned it around on Chili Willy. They end up yep. getting the range racks, which is completely fine. I mean, the melee racks is going to be a, an objective to take down later. But Morphling is absolutely stacked. His inventory is full of green. Ethereal Blade, Butterfly, Handomitis still working away with that Scotty. He's at 1500 HP and he could nuke down. Well, he can't completely nuke down Tokasan. We already saw that. The Bloodstone giving Death Prophet just enough HP to survive, but really faces Floyd not doing that much damage in these fights. Huskar, more of a disruption than anything else. He's also struggling to really do a lot of damage, and they keep on going for this Lich, and Lich is really, really tanky. Like, Faces Void almost couldn't take down a Lich when he's the only one who's being focused in a Chronosphere. He now does have a Heaven's, Heaven's Halberd up when he respawns. He's going to be even harder to kill. Yeah, and I'm afraid that we might even see more of, like, physical disable on on the Crane Fresh guys here, the Cafeteria guys. Um, because we have so many Ghost Scepters. I mean, the Morph is was already using his shotgun defensively. You saw that, for example, helping the Earthshaker out here and there. Now we have a Halberd done on the Lich. So you can just disarm and kite that Void unless there is a BKV up on him. But, wait, who else? I, I thought... No, we have a Hex, but no Ghost Scepter on the Skyrath Mage, but a Ghost Scepter on him would also be nice. But we also have a Halberd now on Earthshaker and a Ghost Scepter on him. So this is nuts. Like, if they want to, they can just disarm the Huskar in the Void. And if it still gets too close or they pop their BKB, they just pop their Ghost Scepters. Like, there's nothing those two heroes can do. But first we have a Smoke. Now. Yeah. Really, really gonna jump in for a Chronosphere onto two. Can they kill off anyone? They're very tanky and they're going to secure both Clinch and Black Dynamite. My two heroes down, Chain Frost will be thrown. Baron dropping very low to that life break. He's in his ghost form and he will get shackled. And Strength Morph will not save him now. Chain Frost still bouncing. So far, it's gonna be two for three. Brewmaster in his split form as Lich does run to the north. Will get caught by the Cyclone and he's still on the run. He's tanky, but I don't think he's tanky enough to escape this. They're gonna lose Pelican at the very least. Brewmaster still. Well, he's just going to escape Pelican. Yeah, he's going to get bashed. I, this switch is just so <laughs> dead. But in the meantime, mid lane, uh, the melee racks is being brought down because the base is in full breach. SMN going to abandon the Lich, who is somehow still freaking alive. There he goes. And try to take down this melee racks. But yeah, a lot of buildings being taken down in the meantime. The Chili Willy side get the best fight that they've had in 45 minutes. Yeah, absolutely. And I give it one more minute, then I actually look at the class when everything's updated. The melee rack survives, and obviously it's the racks with the 5 HPS, which means we have region here on it. So no damage actually done, and this 100 gold smoke, it was absolutely worth it. Absolutely worth it. You know, like this, this last chain frost here of the Lich, this was one of those situations where you regret that you don't have a gun of Scepter. Because it was bouncing forever, like really forever, on the max, wait, this is level 3, how much? How many bounces is this? This is... 10. 10, yeah. It's 10. It was the maximum. The maximum was reached, but like on Scepter it would have done even more damage, and by the time it ended on the 10th, uh, he got the Rasta kill with it, and there were two, still 2 or 3 targets next to each other, so he would have gotten at least 3 or 4 more bounces. I think the Aghanim Scepter... Uh, in this fight would have been a nice choice but either way we're looking at the graphs right now it should be updated and this should be a huge loss for uh, CF there and look at it they're almost losing 10k XP here we were almost at the 25k experience mark when it comes to gold that's not impressive at all like that's not impressive at all like we are, they were working towards the 20k gold advantage but now the graph is not really going to the other side it's more or less just stagnating so in the end Gold-wise, not much lost. Experience-wise, okay. But then again, look at the XP. I'm just displaying for the viewers now the uh, level XP distribution. And we have the Morphling already uh, kept, pretty much, like in the next level. He is not that far away. Just some creep waves or maybe the next Roshan or some kills. And from oh, there on... Courier. Oh, <laughs> Shaker, yeah. I was wondering Shaker what he's was doing there here. For what was really in there? Really long time. That was Mjolnir and Hyperstone being killed off by an Earthshaker. Big oh. pickup for the Cafeteria Fresh side. And now they could look to take perhaps the Melee Raxes in the mid lane or the rest of the Melee Raxes. Roshan not going to be up just yet, though he will respawn very shortly. Uh, yeah, he's up right now. So going in for Roshan, going in for the Melee Raxes, both going to be really, really good. And uh, 
Yeah, the cafeteria fresh side still in the driver's seat. Morphling actually sold his Yasha for a minute style, but now Pelican is actually going to get uh, Chronosphere, as will Clinch again. This Lich very tanky, but not tanky enough with that Chronosphere. Jump forward onto SMN. We'll get the split off. Where is this Morphling? He's back in this fight, going to focus on Kaikamora. He's going to do a lot of damage to the base forward, bring him down first, wait for him forward, trying to kill off this Huskar Baron. is still at pretty much full HP. He'll take down one. He's dropping very slowly with that frozen feet on him, he will freeze, and well, there's not enough damage to kill him off. He can go and kill off Tokusan if he wants to, but Matori, in the meantime, in that hard camp, is going to be brought down. Buyback from the Shadow Shaman, and they have to make a defense now in their middle lane with no exit. Good luck. I don't know, the fight was good, the initiation was good, but I think we reached a point where the Morphling is just too fat. Like, unless that Morphling is somehow miraculously going down, these fights can never be won. Like, this was... A perfect initiation, 2, minus 2 was the start, and still they lose 5 versus 3 pretty much. Just because the Morphling tanked up against everything. Yeah, and I said that he sold for Yasha for Mantisalas, it was actually the BKB that helped him. An incredible amount in that fight. Uh, I think what went the most wrong for Capture Refresh in that uh, Dire Jungle fight was the fact that I'm pretty sure Lifebreak landed on a Ghost Sceptered Morphling. So, I mean, that does a lot of damage. I brought him down really quickly. If that doesn't happen, there's nothing that the uh, the Dire have they, they could use to bring down this Morphling. He has evasion, he has a ton of HP, and they don't have any damage at Chili Willy side. That was just a courier standing in front of the base, like for, for no reason whatsoever. Someone just mismicroing it. Now it actually reaches the. Earthshaker, yes, it was two TP scrolls. I don't know, maybe they had mercy, or maybe they wanted to bait with that courier. I don't know, <laughs> like it was a weird play. But either way, 28 on one side, 48, 20 more on the other, 49 minutes in. The crafts wise, okay, the craft is recuperating when it comes to gold. Pretty much the same about experience, but as I said, experience. Anyway, not too much of an impact because we have the first heroes already capping out, so it doesn't really matter anymore. We are 50 minutes in, and I'm afraid the Morphling reached critical, critical mass. Like, this is just a bomb that is always waiting to explode. I'm, I'm just trying to find a scenario how they could kill the Morphling. But now that the Morphling is soloing Roshan, while the others are just, I don't know, standing there, making sure the Creep Wave is always reaching the base, this is this is it pretty much. Unless Chili Chili really is making the craziest fight of all times, this is not working. Baron just eats the cheese after he slays yeah. Rajan and returns to this fight. Chili Willy are struggling to kill off Baron once. There is a very, very, very low percentage chance that they could find the damage to kill him off twice. Baron's gonna go right to the high ground. He's going to dodge Crypt Swarms and whatnot and go off the tower. The base is in full breach, by the way, so the Chili Willy side, they have to defend and jump forward from Matori, getting a headaches onto Baron. No Chronosphere opportunity just yet. Exorcism does get popped. Baron has an Ethereal Blade. He will shotgun that base's void. He'll jump forward, get the Chronosphere only onto a couple, though. The Fissure going to wall everyone out from this fight, and Clinch going to slowly but surely die. He'll be the first one to drop. Dante dropping very low as well. Where is this Morphling? He's back in the base. He's going to now go to town onto Tokasan. He will save himself a little bit of time by cycling the Morphling, but Ralph is going to hit with an Echo Slam. Now Tokasan on his way out. He's the last one to survive. The Aegis does get popped on the Morphling, but so what? That is a 5 for 1 trade with an Aegis. <laughs> Chili Willy tap out. It's yeah, over. that is GG. And Chili Willy lose this game, which makes it. Who won the first one? That was so close, I can't even remember. It was 1 1. It's a 1-1, one, one, right? Yeah. yeah. So perfectly. It's it's equal for all those who bet their ass on just one team. They're happy now because they get their items back, I guess. But either way, that's it. My name is Eflamok, and with me was Michael Loras. But before you run away, there's another game. The Crane Fresh guys, the cafeteria is coming back, but this time they're going to play against the Russians. Vodka Dotka in the form of Compass Gaming will come up right after this, just like a five minute break, so be there. Like, if you like what we do, then of course give us a follow here on Twitch, on Facebook and Twitter. You always get the news, what's going on on Hefla TV, news, giveaways, whatnot. And of course, if you missed the games or you thought the game was damn amazing, I have to share it with my friends, then go on our YouTube. Mubot is always telling you where all those links are, so all the support is appreciated. And yep, yeah, we take a break, fix Mike, and then we are back in just some seconds. Minutes. Mm -hmm.